Uh, some people call it vision. Um, uh, vision's an awfully big word to me. Vision's an awfully big word to me because I, I believe, first of all, vision matters. Let me tell you that vision matters, and I'll help you understand that in a second. Um, but I like to use the word perspective because it makes it possible for anyone to have one. When you say vision, it feels like only a few selected visionaries of the world can have one. But everyone has a perspective, and that's in fact all vision means. That you see the world uh, in a way that is either uh, different um, or uh, otherwise, okay, than, than somebody else. Uh, and you see opportunities that I think are, that you believe are particularly important to go in and address, that you can address uh, in a particular way. And so perspective. Um, our perspective at the time, this is 1993, uh, you guys won't, won't remember this, but uh, the, uh, the PC um, was Windows 3.1, uh, CD-ROM uh, was uh, about to be introduced. Uh, there were no PCs with networks. Um, wireless technology, uh, the note, if, you said some, if somebody said radio, uh, I think you would, the word that would come to mind is FM radio. Uh, and so wireless technology didn't exist. Uh, the fastest microprocessor uh, in the world was a 66 megahertz 46DX2. Uh, and I don't think any of you would even use it uh, in your tennis shoes today. Um, and we would run our computers with that. Uh, and uh, the PC was, was uh, becoming used uh, for... Uh, desktop or for office automation. Uh, our perspective was that this particular uh, device was going to be unique in the sense that it has the ability to run programs. And what if uh, we uh, gave it the benefit of running 3D graphics programs so that um, uh, you could uh, explore new worlds, play games, um, you know, play games. And so uh, we started a, a company, and, and the business plan uh, basically uh, read something like this. We're going to take uh, technology that was available only in the most expensive workstations. We're going to try to make it, reinvent the technology and make it inexpensive. And um, uh, the killer app was video games. Uh, and so I, I took this idea to Sand Hill Road, uh, and, um, uh, and they told me there was no video game market. People don't start companies to play games. And um, uh, my parents, my, uh, I remember calling my mom and telling her that I'm going to start this company. And she says, you know, what do you, what do you guys do? And I said, we build these things called 3D graphics chips, and, and um, uh, people would use them to play games. And, and then she, she said, why don't you go get a job? <laughs> and, and so, and, and so um, uh, now, of course, of course, games was, was we believe, uh, going to be a very large part of the marketplace. Now, we had that perspective uh, for very obvious reasons. We grew up in the video game generation. I was the video game generation. I was the beginning of the video game generation. And so the, the entertainment value of video games, uh, computer games, was very obvious to me. And I could imagine how it could be a very large market and a very large industry. For a lot of the people that were older, that sensibility didn't exist. And so notice, I've just described to you a perspective about the world that we had that is apparently, obviously now true, because video games is the world's largest digital media industry today. Um, it is apparently true. And yet, at the time, uh, our common sense was unique. Nobody would have created the technology, nobody would have created a company with the sole purpose of building technology to make video games possible. And so that was our perspective. 